Hey everybody, Mr. French here. Today I want to share with you how to make some really realistic line drawings. We've looked at shading already in class and now we're just going to focus on line. So when we do these drawings, we're not going to sit there and try to do any shading or hatching or anything like that. We're just looking at edges of things that are really there. It might be the outside edge, it might be the inside edge. But when you're done uh, with this, you should be able to come up with an awesome drawing like this one. Check it out. I did this one in about 10 minutes. So as you can see, it's got lots of realistic details in there. And I was being very slow and careful. It's not a rough, sketchy kind of a line at all. They're just very smooth, continuous lines. You just pick a line and follow it until it ends and then find another line and just keep building it up until you've got as much as you want to put in there. You know, I could go maybe five or 10 more minutes in there and then it might look even more awesome if I pack in some more details because there's so many lines in your hand. Uh, you can really build up the realism. Now the technique we're going to use is going to be a little bit unusual. Uh, it comes from a book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. So this is just an excellent, excellent book. You might have heard of it before. It's got uh, a lot of research into how your brain functions and how you function as an artist. Here's Betty Edwards, uh, the author of the book. And she has just been all over the world. She's been teaching this. Uh, that, that book is actually a course in drawing. So if you were to read that course and just try out all the different techniques, you would get really, really good. You should look at the PowerPoint where I've got all these before and after shots of uh, students who have been in her course. They just really advance very quickly. So if you try out this technique, even though it seems weird, if you give it your best shot, just really get into it and just you know, relax, you can really improve your drawing quality. So let's see how this would work. It's called a, to start out, before we do that super awesome one that I did for 10 minutes, we're just gonna do some quick ones. So we're just gonna draw for two minutes, just practicing getting the kind of line quality that you want. So let's, all, let, let's get set up so we can do this well. First of all, you want to get your sketchbook. So, you know, open it up to a nice blank sheet of paper on your sketchbook there. Get yourself a good pencil. Don't use a mechanical drawing pencil because that lead is so skinny, you won't get much line variety. So, you know, if all you have is a number two pencil, that would be okay. But hopefully you've got those good drawing pencils from the Art Materials Kit. You know, pick a 6B or a 4B or, you know, pick a really good drawing pencil from your Art Materials Kit or maybe you've got some of your own. And let's pick one of your favorite drawing pencils that's going to give you a nice dark line if you press down harder but you could also ease up on it and make it a thinner lighter line if you need it because that's one of the keys to making realistic lines when you look at the line if it looks dark and thick you just press down a little harder if it looks very thin and light ease up on the pressure maybe hold your pencil up more vertically so that it's going to be a thinner line if you hold it kind of diagonal maybe it'll be a thicker line it will be actually so think about these techniques as you're drawing and I'm going to show you how to set yourself up so that this will work out for you uh, now you got to understand the psychology behind this because what's going to happen is you're going to be shutting off that part of your brain that's constantly criticizing yourself and telling you oh I'm no good at this oh I can't draw you know, that is your worst enemy right there so this technique will allow you to just shut that voice in your head down completely because what will happen is you're not going to be able to judge your work while you're drawing it because you're not going to look at your drawing until after it's done for these quick two-minute studies. It's called a blind contour, which means you're not going to close your eyes and be blind. What it means is you're not going to look at your paper while you're drawing. You're just going to look at the lines. So when you're looking at those lines, you just pretend like you're an ant and then you're traveling along that line right there and wherever that ant is traveling, where that line goes, your pencil is moving at the exact same moment. So you're in complete synchronicity with your hand and your eye and your brain. You're all focused and just recording everything that you see very slowly and carefully. So, you know, you're not going to simplify and do just basic choppy, scratchy kinds of lines. They're just very smooth, precise lines. So you just record as much as you can. So the way you're gonna shut off that part of your brain that's constantly criticizing you is, like I said, you're gonna not look at your paper. So you set yourself up uh, in, a, in a way. Let me show you how you do it. Okay, so check it out. See, what I'm doing here, instead of facing my paper, 
and constantly criticizing my drawing as I go. You know how that works. You, you know, you make a line, you're like, oh man, that's too long, or you know, oh, man, it's going the wrong direction. You know, you're constantly criticizing, you're racing, you know, and just fuss over, you know, give yourself all these negative messages. Well, you're not gonna be giving yourself negative messages with this method because you can't criticize. You're gonna shut off that critic and will allow the artist to just be free to record what's there. So see, I'm sitting sideways. I know you can't see my head, but I want you to see my body position because this is the way you need to do it. You need to set yourself up so that your elbow is back here and then your hand, then you're just holding whatever position you want. And then maybe I'll hold it like uh, number one right there. Just make a position like that. And then I like to start on the right hand side and start working my way over. It's a little bit easier for me since I'm right handed, but you know, if you're a lefty, you might do it the opposite. And what you do is you just pick a line and then just slowly record that line. And your eye slowly travels along and, and every little curve, every little bump, you're just recording that, you're moving your pencil. And you're not worried at all about the, the end result because anytime you get all stressed out and worried about it, then that's gonna just you know, interrupt the flow and you'll start second guessing yourself. So you know, you're not gonna worry at all. You're just gonna relax and then just go with the flow, smooth, continuous lines. So this is the way you would do it. You just begin like this. So yours might look something like this one. This guy did it for two minutes, and you can see he's got some really good, smooth, continuous lines where he was really focused and capturing what his finger looked like. He's got you know the lines for the knuckles there. Over here, though, you can see that he's got that choppy, hesitant line. You know, we don't want that. And also, look at this. Here, he just kind of gave up completely. He's just going do 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 do. You know, just these random scribbles. You know, there's no line on your hand that has, you know, a bunch of little scribbles. You know, there's a lot of very defined lines. So, you know, make sure you stay very specific and you can really improve your quality. So this girl over here stayed focused the whole time. Look how awesome that is. Oh my gosh, that is so great. You know, she's got the darker lines where they're thicker in the folds of the skin and then the lighter, thinner ones. You know, it really looks like your hand right there, the fingernails, everything in there is just so clear and sharp. And the only thing about this one is that she made the drawing so small. You know, the smaller you get, then the tighter the details need to be, and you just don't have enough room to move around. So, you know, if you notice your first drawing is about this size, try to make it bigger. Your hand should be about life size, because, you know, and even my big hands, they, they fit nicely on this piece of paper, so. You know, I know you can't look at your paper, of course, but if you saw that this first one didn't turn out so well size-wise, just force yourself to spread out a little bit more. Just remember, you know, scale it up a little bit. And it's okay if you accidentally go off the edge a little bit. That's, that's fine. So, you know, when you do uh, make them larger, so you, that way you can get all those little details much more easily. This is one that I did of my fist, and you can see that I've got all the little wrinkles here in my thumb. You now there's the thumbnail or my finger. Okay, so now what's called the partial blind contour or the modified contour. This is where you're actually having your hand right next to your paper there so you can be studying uh, your paper as well as the hand. But you wanna be careful not to regress back into blocking in basics by doing those choppy, sketchy kinds of lines. You still wanna keep that slow, continuous record of the actual details you're looking at over there. It's just that I would say about 25% of the time you're checking your paper to make sure that things are in the right spot. And then, uh, you know, 75% of the time though, you still keep your eyes focused on the line and you're moving your pencil at the same time your eye is traveling along that line. So you're still in synchronicity with, you know, the subject and the drawing you know, taking place at the same time. As your eye travels, your pencil travels. So you just totally focus, zeroing in on every little bump and detail. If the proportions are a little bit off, that's no big deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and go for 10 minutes here and we'll speed it up so that it won't take you so long to view it. But of course, you're not gonna do it fast. Remember, you're doing it nice and slow to set a timer for 10 minutes. 
Now, after you've done your two minute ones, you've already done a couple of totally blind contours, sitting sideways, not looking at your paper for two minutes. Now you can set up for 10 minutes where you're gonna go ahead and look at your hand and your paper. But you only check your paper like, you know, every so often, okay? Don't, don't be looking at your paper too much. You're looking at your hand for the most part. So I'm gonna go ahead and start right up here. Okay, so there you have it. You know, here's my drawing, it's all lines. Remember, you're not gonna do any shading whatsoever because if you do any shading, then it's gonna be hard to see some of those lines. So, you know, mine turned out pretty nicely. Her portions are a little bit off, but you know, we're not looking uh, for proportions with this one. We're looking for accurate, realistic detail. So here's a really nice one. This girl did, just did such a great job. You can see the, you know, it's very small. You know, this is the girl that did it so small before. So, you know, make sure that you make them a little bit larger than that. Uh, here's a really nice one one of my students did. You can see they use the space really, really well. Great drawing. Look how clear and crisp the line quality is. Excellent details. Uh, don't forget to go ahead and have different values in your lines. You know, some of the lines will be dark and thick. Some of them will be like, that last one was a little bit, uh, almost all medium kind of lines. And here's one that look, uh, looks really good. It's got the light like, and the thin lines there to show more depth and more realism. Okay, so I hope you enjoy creating your realism there. So you're ready to get started.